Like many other tobacco companies, Imperial Brands offers an exceptionally attractive dividend yield of almost 9%. However, yields of this magnitude always indicate increased risks. Income-focused investors can buy the shares today, but they need to be aware of these risks. In this video, we will show you what you can expect from the shares and dividends in the medium term and where the risks are. The British Consumer Goods Company mainly produces and sells tobacco products like cigarettes, cigars, and oral nicotine products all over the world. It also offers rolling papers, vapor products, and heated tobacco. Its brand lineup includes well known names such as Davidoff Cigarettes, Gauloises, West Winston, Rizzler, or Blue. Additionally, it owns 50.01% of the Spanish company Logista. This company provides logistic services for the tobacco industry in Europe. The most important part of its business is tobacco products, which contribute over 90% to the total operating profit. The company is the fourth largest in its industry and has 25,000 employees. Its shares are listed on the London Stock Exchange. Imperial Brands had a long period of regularly increasing dividend payments. Then in 2020 things changed. After years of stagnant profits, high debts and falling stock prices, the management under new CEO Stefan Bomhard made a plan to restructure. Part of this plan was selling the premium cigar business for 1.2 billion euros. Because of the loss of these earnings and to speed up debt reduction, the dividend per share was cut by a third. The new dividend policy aims to grow regularly from this level. So far, this goal has always been met. In January 2021, the new five-year plan was introduced. The main goal is to focus primarily on the five most important markets for combustible products. These markets are the United States, Germany, the UK, Australia and Spain. Then, the area of e-cigarettes, heated tobacco products and oral nicotine was restructured. This category is called Next Generation Products. The company sees itself as a challenger and wants to play a certain role in niche markets in the future, especially focusing on heated tobacco products. Overall, the original ambitions were significantly lowered. The plan was to implement these strategies in Phase 1, from 2021 to 2022. Than in Phase 2 from 2023 to 2025, the market shares, returns and profits should grow again. So far, these goals have been achieved. Market shares in the focus markets have increased, sales and operating profit grew by about 4%, and the financial condition is in a better state. This has also been recognized by market participants, with the total return increasing by over 30% from its lowest point in October 2021 to today. The company aims to increase its annual revenue by a small single-digit percentage and its operating profit by a mid-single-digit percentage in the medium term. The dividend is planned to be increased every year, and the company has confirmed its stock buyback programme worth 1.1 billion British pounds. Like most tobacco companies, Imperial Brand talks a lot about its new products, which are supposedly much healthier than cigarettes and cigars. However, the fact is that these still contribute over 90% to the operating profit. The revenues from new generation products are 10 times lower than those from tobacco products and are not yet profitable. Whether this will ever change significantly is unclear. The distribution sector is profitable but contributes only a small amount to the overall result. In other words, the company still mainly lives off cigarettes. And this always carries the risk of lawsuits. Shareholders need to be aware of this. This is also one of the reasons why tobacco companies are valued low. Another negative point. Global tobacco consumption has been shrinking for many years. It's a structurally declining industry. Especially in the focus markets that are very important for imperial brands, the trend is negative. Of course, companies can also make money in a declining industry, but it's preferable to invest in a structurally growing industry. If the current trend continues, it will become increasingly difficult for companies like imperial brands to grow sustainably in the long term. From a short to medium term view, the dividend appears to be quite stable with a bit of growth potential. In the long term, the company's earnings have little growth potential, so investors shouldn't expect too much from the stock price. The current dividend yield of more than 8% is very attractive. Therefore, the stocks can be added as a supplement to an income portfolio. However, one must be aware of the mentioned risks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for similar content.